welcome all attendees in this lecture we will be discussing about surveyor and surveying procedure these are the contents introduction evolution of dental surveyor definition types of dental surveyor parts of dental surveyor purposes of dental surveyor surveying a diagnostic cast recording relation of a cast to surveyor surveying the master cast summary conclusion and references introduction many advances in the field of removable partial denture have made the practice more accurate but the one piece of equipment without which the modern clinical practice of removable prosthodontics would not be possible is the dental surveyor evolution of dental surveyor dr a j fortunati in 1918 is thought to be the first person to employ a mechanical device to determine relative parallelism of tooth surfaces The first such instrument to be produced commercially the nay instrument was made available in 1923 and still remains to be most widely used surveyor definitions survey it is to uh, survey is to de uh, determine the form and position of a given entity by means of taking linear and angular measurements the other definition is the procedure of locating and delineating the contour and position of the abutment teeth and associated structure before designing a removable partial denture is known as survey surveyor it is a parallel instrument used in construction of a prosthesis to locate and delineate the contours and relative position of the abutment teeth and associated structures Surveying is an analysis and comparison of the prominence of intraoral contours associated with the fabrication of a prosthesis. Survey line is a line produced on a cast by a surveyor marking the greatest prominence of contour in relation to the planned path of placement of a restoration. Types of dental surveyor. These are various types of dental surveyors: Nay surveyor, Jelenko surveyor, William surveyor, the Retento scope. the ticonium surveyor the microanalyzer pw rotary surveyor which is used to determine a hinge axis and intraoral surveyor parts of dental surveyor vertical arm horizontal arm surveying arm mandrel surveying table and surveying platform surveying platform or a base it is it is in which the table moves vertical arm supports the superstructure horizontal arm extends at right angle from the vertical arm from which the surveying arm suspends surveying arm is capable of vertical movement in jelenko surveyor it is spring loaded surveying table to which the cast to be studied is attached surveying tools include an analyzing rod undercut gauges back streamer carbon marker and shield an analyzing rod is the a uh, tool that contacts the convex surface of the tooth in same way a tangent contacts a curve it helps in determining the parallelism of one surface to the other undercut gauges are used to identify the specific amount and location of desired undercut on the abutment tooth surface wax trimmer is used to eliminate or block out undesirable undercuts with wax on the master cast carbon marker is used to scribe survey lines and shield is used to reinforce the carbon marker so that it doesn't break during the survey procedure <coughs> purposes of dental surveyor surveying the diagnostic cast contouring the wax pattern placement of intracoronal retainers or internal attachment placement of internal rest seat surveying ceramic veneer crowns machining cast restorations surveying master cast let us under let us understand the uses in detail surveying the diagnostic cast the objective of surveying the diagnostic cast are as follows to determine the most desirable path of placement that will eliminate or minimize interference to placement and removal to identify proximal tooth surfaces that are or need to be made parallel so that they act as guiding planes during placement and removal to locate and measure areas of the teeth that may be used for retention to determine the most suitable path of placement that will permit locating retainers and artificial teeth to the best aesthetic advantage to permit an accurate charting of the mouth preparations to be made to determine whether areas of interference need to be eliminated surgically or by changing the path of placement 
to delineate the height of contour on the abutment teeth to record the cast position for future reference contouring the wax pattern here in these images we can see that during the fabrication of cast metal processes the wax pattern can be contoured with the help of a surveyor placement of intracoronal retainer or internal attachments the surveyor is used to position the intracoronal retainer in the wax pattern on abutment teeth until absolute parallelism among all the attachments are achieved to select the path of insertion in relation to the long axis of the abutment teeth that will avoid areas of interference then surveyor can be used to cut the recess in the stone teeth on the diagnostic cast for estimating the proximity of the recess to the pulp and to facilitate the fabrication of metal or resin jig to guide the preparation of the recess in the mouth then it can also be used to carve the recess in the wax pattern to place internal attachment trays in the wax pattern or to cut traces in the casting with hand piece holder it is also used to place the keyway portion of the attachment in the casting before investing and soldering each keyway must be located parallel to the keyways elsewhere in the arch placement of the internal rest seat can also be done with the help of a surveyor internal rest seat may be carved in the wax pattern and further refined with the hand piece which is attached to vertical arm after casting or the entire rest seat may be cut in the cast restoration with the hand piece the internal rest seat in the partial denture construction provides a positive occlusal support that is more favorably located in relation to the rotational axis of the abutment it provides horizontal stabilization through the parallel vertical walls thereby serving as stabilizing and reciprocal arm placed extra coronally surveying of the ceramic veneer crowns can be done Uh, with the help of a surveyor it is often used for restoration of teeth where aesthetic is of prime consideration the surveyor is used to contour all the areas except the buccal or labial surfaces before the final glaze the abutment crown should be returned to the surveyor to ensure the correct contour of the veneer portion or to locate those areas that need recontouring here we can see the surveying of the ceramic crown machining of the cast restoration with the hand piece holder attached the axial surfaces of the cast and ceramic restorations may be refined by using suitable carborundum disc cast restoration should be first tried in the mouth and then transferred by means of plaster or acrylic index impression to a reinforced cast for machining purpose the new cast is then positioned on the surveyor confirming the path of placement surveying the master cast is the most important use of a surveyor the objectives of surveying the master cast are as follows to select the most suitable path of placement to measure the retentive areas and identify location of clasp terminal position to locate the undesirable undercut areas to trim the block out material parallel to the path of placement before duplication surveying procedure the preliminary analysis is done to determine the most advantageous path of insertion and to decide upon the various types of preparation that will be required the definitive design in which the guidelines are drawn undercuts are measured and marked soft tissues undercuts are delineated and the designing of the framework is outlined on the planning cast surveying a diagnostic cast attach the cast to the surveyor table then the teeth are approximately made parallel to the platform only in a tentative way the, uh, then the various factors that determine path of placement and removal are considered the path of placement and removal is the tilt of the cast on the surveyor is contemplated to determine at what angle the partial denture will sit over the remaining teeth and any other obstructions that may present this angle that the process is takes as it goes to place is referred to as the path of insertion or path of withdrawal factors that influence the path of insertion guiding planes guiding planes are vertically parallel surfaces on abutment teeth oriented so as to contribute to the direction of the path of placement and removal of a removable partial denture proximal tooth surfaces that bear a parallel relationship to one another must be either found or created to act as guiding planes guiding planes are necessary to ensure the passage of the rigid parts of the prosthesis past existing areas of the interference and without causing undesirable stresses on the teeth Guiding planes are also necessary to ensure predictable clasp retention by providing a positive direction to the prosthesis. 
Gliding planes provide lateral stabilization to the partial denture when completely seated. Guiding plane does not need to be more than 2 to 3 mm in occlusal gingival height. Alter the cast anteroposteriorly to get the proximal surfaces as close to parallel as possible, thereby determining the anteroposterior tilt of the cast. Contact at the marginal ridge is preferred over contact in the cervical area because a plane may then be established by recontouring. Other axial surfaces of abutment teeth may also be used as guiding planes by having the stabilizing component of the direct retainer assembly contacting in its entirety the axial surface of the proximal teeth. Retentive areas. The occlusal surfaces of the teeth must be viewed in the horizontal plane because the dislodging forces are always perpendicular to the occlusal plane. Changing the tilt to create undercut is an illusion. If undercuts are not present, restorations may be used such as full crowns. The 0.01 inch undercut is desired for cast clasp assembly, whereas 0.02 inch for wrought wire clasp. Undercuts should be present either in mesobuccal or distobuccal line angle and in the cervical third. The bracing arm should be placed at the junction of the middle and cervical third to lower torquing force on the tooth and even provide aesthetic advantage. The other factor and most important is the interferences during the selection of the path of insertion or withdrawal. Interferences may be the hard tissue interferences such as teeth and bony exostrosis and soft tissue interferences which can be eliminated by altering the tilt, blocking out the wax blockout, mouth preparation and surgery. Interferences in the mandible may be lingual torus, lingually inclined remaining teeth, areas lingual to the retromolar pad and bony exostosis or bony undercuts in the alveolar ridge, buccal to premolar and canine. Then interferences in the maxilla may be torus palatinus, bony exostosis, buccal to the posterior edentulous ridge, buccally tipped remaining teeth and anterior edentulous ridge may act as an interference. Areas of interferences overlooked at the time of initial surveying are not included in the mouth preparation. Such areas are distal line angle premolar and mesial line angle of molar. Three alternatives can be used to eliminate the undercut, that is black wax blockout. This is the least satisfactory method. Circumvented, it is also circumvented by approaching the retentive area from gingival direction with a bar clasp. And uh, interferences can be eliminated by mouth preparation. Aesthetics is one of the factor during the selection of path of insertion. The path of placement thus established after considering the previous factors must still be considered from the aesthetic standpoint both to the location of the class and the arrangement of artificial teeth. By placing the retentive clasp in the distal gingival third of the abutment, maximum aesthetic results can be achieved. Aesthetics takes precedence over rest of the factors in class for redentural situations. Recording the relation of the cast to the surveyor can be done in different, by different methods that is tripoding, scoring the cast and cemented pin method. Then surveying the master cast. The master cast should be surveyed as new cast. Prepared proximal guiding plane surfaces help in correcting the anteroposterior tilt and equal retentive areas uh, position the cast in a lateral tilt. Gross interferences are eliminated during mouth preparation. Any remaining minor interferences will be eliminated with blockout. The cast is scored or is tripoded. Mark the uh, survey line. Then any areas of the interferences to the rigid part of the framework during seating or removal should be indicated with the carbon marker to locate areas to be blocked out or relieved. In this image, we can see the uh, surveying is done and the uh, wax blockout is done. Survey lines. Survey line is a line produced on a cast by a surveyor marking the greatest prominence of contour in relation to the path of placement of a restoration. Blattenfin's classification of survey line, near zone and far zone. Near zone is the half which, uh, near zone is the half which lies nearer to the saddle or edentulous area and far zone is the half which is away from the saddle. Then there are various types of survey line. Medium survey line is on the buccal or lingual surface of the tooth. It is approximately equidistant from the occlusal surface and gingival margin in the near zone and slightly nearer the gingival margin in the far zone. It indicates the use of an occlusally approaching or circumferential clasp. This is the medium survey line. 
then diagonal survey line near the it is near the occlusal surface in the near zone of the tooth but in the far zone the opposite condition exists and little undercut is present it is common on the buccal surfaces of canines and premolar this is the diagonal survey line then high survey line appears much nearer to the occlusal third of the tooth in both near and far zone it may arise as a result of abnormal tooth form we can see the high survey line in this picture then low survey line is traced very low it re uh, result of marked inclination of the tooth it is associated with the high survey line on the opposite surface insufficient in undercut exists in case of low survey line and it cannot bear a retentive class one for example in this picture we can see a low survey line summary the dental surveyor is an impeccable tool in the treatment planning and designing of a cast partial removable denture it is used to analyze the diagnostic cast during the preliminary surveying for studying the contours of the axial surfaces of the potential abutment teeth for retentive undercut areas locating tooth and soft tissue surfaces which may offer interference to easy removal and insertion of the partial denture evaluating the aesthetic possibilities and problems associated with the placement of clasp assemblies and the missing teeth locating and analyzing the existing and potential guiding plane surfaces when the above factors have been evaluated a path of insertion can be selected which will represent the best possible compromise of all factors when the path of insertion has been determined the surveyor can be used to mark the height of contour line on the diagnostic cast and measure the exact amount of undercut tripoding of the cast can be done after that as it assists in contouring the wax pattern for the abutment teeth to provide the required amount of retentive area and guiding plane to block out the undesirable undercut with wax and aid in positioning the precision attachments so uh, surveying is uh, surveying is done with the help of uh, with the help of selection of guiding planes retentive undercut interferences and considering the aesthetics for suitable path of insertion which will help in designing of the final cast partial denture prosthesis conclusion to plan survey and design a removable partial denture which will provide a proper retention stability and support with the with aesthetics the dental surveyor must be utilized as an adjunctive tool in the treatment plan these are the references that can be used for further reading thank you